Man, life as a Baltimore Orioles fan must be fantastic right now. As I start writing this, they are kicking the Yankees' butts 14-1. to In New York! Gunnar Henderson went off for two home runs, and he is just the beginning of the young talent up or on its way. Colton Kowser and Jordan Westberg recently were called up. Heston Gierstad is mashing the ball at AAA. Grayson Rodriguez, he's rebounding nicely back in AAA. From looking like a team that didn't do enough this offseason, the Baltimore Orioles are buzzing right now. As I type this, they are four games up in the wildcard race with a 51-35 record, and that record's only gotten better since. Again, it's good to be an Orioles fan right now. And the heart of this team? Oh yeah, another kid. The Oregonian legend, Adley Rutschman. The switch-hitting beauty is arguably the best catcher in the game at just 25 years old, and he's already looking to lead this Orioles team to its first playoff appearance since... The Manny Machado era? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. 2016. Sure, seven seasons isn't that bad, but this franchise is only three years removed from a 110-loss season. And without that COVID short season of 2020, they easily could have had four 100-plus loss seasons in a row. But what if I told you the Orioles were never supposed to go through any of that? But instead, right now, if everything would have gone according to plan, Adley, probably never an Oriole. And maybe we're talking about a different switch-hitting Orioles catcher, but not about him leading the team to the playoffs but debating his candidacy as a Baseball Hall of Famer. But baseball is a cruel game. It rarely works out how anyone plans it. The first time, at least. And that brings us back to that other switch-hitting catcher. What was supposed to be, and why Adley Rutschman's success. Every one of these smile-bear-hug combos to close out a game. Why they mean so much to some of us baseball fans. Enter Matt Weeders. Welcome to Good Vibes Baseball. Please consider subscribing if you haven't. I do appreciate you either way. Now let's get into some good vibes, shall we? The year is 2009. The Baltimore Orioles are coming off of a run of 10 out of 11 seasons where they finished at least 20 games back of first and three where they finished 30 games back of first. And that's in their division. What the fuck, man? But as Batman once said, the night is just darkest before the dawn. And by the time 2009 rolled around, Baltimore Orioles fans were seeing the light in the form of a 6-5 switch-hitting offensive prodigy catcher from Georgia Tech University, Matt Weeders. Now, I don't know about you all, but growing up, I was absolutely obsessed with baseball prospects. Who was going to be the next superstar? The idea of the young gun taking the league by fire and instantly becoming a team pillar was the goddamn dream. And Matt Weeders, well, let's just say he was him before it was cool to be him, at least in college and in the minors. But before we get into what happened with the Orioles, we got to go back a little bit. Let's go back to Georgia Tech. The year is 2005. Matt Weeders begins his illustrious career at Georgia Tech. And when I say illustrious, I mean he was a stud. Don't just take my word for it either. Georgia Tech inducted him into its Sports Hall of Fame back in 2017 for the work he put in from the years 2005 to 2007. According to TheBaseballCube.com, in 2005 as a freshman, Weeders hit 366 with 10 bombs, 17 two-baggers, and an OPS of 1051. Absolutely ridiculous. In 2006, as a sophomore, the average did dip a little bit to 355, but the power picked up. He had 15 dingers, 22 baggers, and an OPS of 1086. And just for fun, Wieners finished up his Georgia Tech career in 2007 with similar numbers to his freshman campaign by batting 358, 10 home runs, 17 doubles, and an OPS of 1072 absolutely dominant offensive numbers. Oh yeah, he also pitched a combined 87 innings for Georgia Tech in his three seasons, posting a career ERA of 3.83 with 16 saves and 83 strikeouts. 
while consistently throwing mid-90s. And that ERA, that was inflated from his final season where he was preparing to be a top five, if not the first overall pick in the draft solely as a catcher. But that's right, folks. He was doing his best Buster Posey impression and doing the two-way thing way before Shohei made it so damn cool. But honestly, Weeders was that cool to me and tons of other baseball fans. If you thought this generation is special for wanting to find the next unicorn, well, guess what? We were just as obsessed with finding unicorns back in the 2000s, and a 6'5 catcher with power from both sides of the plate, elite defensive ability, and leadership for days, oh yeah, and he closes out games throwing mid-90s, well, that was something to get the masses excited. But pitching was never going to be Weeders' future, and by the 2007 draft rolled around, Weeders was viewed as a consensus top pick as a catcher. Looking back to the top of the 2007 draft, we can look at it historically as uh, a bit of a stinker. David Price, sure, he was a stud coming out of Andy and the Rays absolutely nailed their pick. Mike Moustakis, solid major leaguer. But him and Josh Vitters, the two high school third basemen, they were very highly touted, but those picks were more on potential than production. And let's not even talk about the Pirates pick of Daniel Moskos at number four. Uh, who, who is that? The real issue for Weeders came down to the money. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Or at least that's what the rumors said. He was a Boris client after all. Whatever the reason, Weeders fell to number five and the Orioles thought that they had a switch hitting Joe Maurer on their hands. Except he was going to hit 30 bombs a year while hitting over 300. And remember, batting average was much more highly regarded than it is today. And you know what? Weeders actually carried this college success and these lofty expectations. He carried them over to the pro game. We are now in 2008. While Weeders was with the high A Frederick Keys, he entered the season as MLB.com's 21st overall prospect. And you know what? He put up similar numbers to his days at Georgia Tech. In 69 games, he hit 348 with 15 homers, only eight doubles, but an OPS still north of 1,000. Gotta love it. He then was promoted to double A and went on to play in 61 more games while posting a ridiculous batting line of 365 with 12 more nukes and 14 more doubles. His OPS of 1085 was right in line with his best season at Georgia Tech, and this is against double A talent. Weeders was living up to the hype, and by the time the 2009 season rolled around, Baltimore was hungry to see Weeders in an Orioles jersey. Weeders had already proven that he was good enough to be the everyday catcher, and the city needed their glimmer of hope to arrive. But back in 2009, well, teams could still manipulate service time to gain an extra year of control for their premier prospects, and Weeders, he was absolutely a premier prospect. So there was literally no incentive for the Orioles to call him up to start the season. Instead, they had him start out in AAA, where Weeders didn't necessarily blow the doors down. Instead, he was his consistent self at the plate, showing discipline, keeping the average north of 300, and posting a respectable OPS of 890. That's actually really good. So after 39 games, the Orioles did the right thing and called him up. He tripled in his first ever at bat as an Oriole, and the city's savior had arrived. It was good to be a Baltimore fan. You know, that triple, it's also something to remember, but we'll get back to that. But Weeders, he finished the season hitting 288 with nine home runs, 15 doubles, and an OPS of 753 in 96 games. Not bad at all, but that's also not offensive prodigy numbers. But that didn't deter the faith. It was his first year and playing the most defensively demanding position at an excellent level while providing that sort of offensive production was a great start. So much so that Sports Illustrated even went so far to dub Weeders the perfect catch on the cover of, a 20, of their 2010 March issue. But projecting players is tough. I don't know if anyone was ever going to live up to the expectations that were thrust upon Weeders. From 2010 to 2016, Weeder's final season in Baltimore, he did have some very successful seasons. He had a run of three straight years with 20 plus home runs. 
He made four all-star teams and even won back-to-back -back gold gloves in 2011 and 2012. He overcame Tommy John surgery and was a productive major leaguer moving forward. He finished his career with two seasons in Washington and rounded it out with two more in St. Louis. And again, he was productive. Dude was an excellent ball player. He's even a coach at Georgia Tech now. But injuries are something that no one can control. Weeders really only had seven healthy years. Even if he was the best player in baseball every one of those years, would he be a Hall of Famer? Tough to say because that team also never won. And that is why. That is why Adley's success and this team's success right now is so important. It's now May 21st, 2022. Orioles fans have been wallowing in their anger mixed with deja vu for weeks as they've had to wait for the much anticipated debut of their prize switch hitting catching phenom. Wait, it, it, is this 2009? You mean the Orioles did the exact same thing to Adley that they did to Weeders? Hmm. You know, in fairness to the Orioles, Adley wasn't tearing it up at AAA at the time, but come on guys, he should have broken camp with the big league team. Now I do give credit to the Orioles for one thing. They didn't make Adley wait an entire series before he got his first game action. And that's actually what they did with Matt Weeders. They announced his call up and then he proceeded to stew in his own anxiety for three full games. Weeders himself said that this had an impact on him in his debut in an interview with The Athletic. But back to Adley in this May Saturday. Baltimore's switch hitting catching prodigy with leadership qualities for days had arrived. And wouldn't you know it? He also tripled in his first ever at bat. Exactly like Weeders. Fun fact, Manny Machado also tripled in his first at-bat with the Orioles. What's up with Orioles prospects tripling in their first at-bats? But with that one triple by Adley, years of frustration were instantly replaced with hope. Hope that the savior had arrived. Adam Jones once said fans expected Matt Weeders to be Jesus Christ in shin guards. And you know what? He wasn't. But he also wasn't a bust. He was a productive major leaguer who ran into injury issues. He may not have been the perfect catch, as dubbed by Sports Illustrated, but you know what? Matt Wieters is still one of my favorite baseball players. I'll never forget the good vibes that dude brought to the game. Maybe it's unfair to put the expectations on these young lads' shoulders so early. But about that Jesus in shin guards comment, are we sure it just wasn't 11 years too early? But that's going to do it for the good vibes today, baseball fans. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, please consider subscribing if you haven't. Helps us out a ton. I do appreciate you guys either way. But until next time, baseball fans, cheers!